What's up? Happy Bowtie Friday. I'm here with the Build Guild. We're building stuff. Uh, we got all sorts of fun stuff to talk about today, but I'm going to start it off and I'm going to talk about the feast. Okay, so we we have this new multi-sig called uh, feast.biddlegiddle.eth, and it's about celebrating when we ship something. So we have lots of builders, and a lot of time you're spending the time kind of going through the tech tree and building things for your own education, but there's always sort of this combo move of something neat gets shipped while you're learning along the way. And then maybe even someone comes to us and says, hey, I wish the Build Guild could build this thing. And then we build it for them and we need to celebrate those things. So, so while you're getting your education, you could also be building like other things randomly. But this feast idea is just a multi-sig to reward people for shipping, uh, specifically shipping products that are either like four things or four like for a third party or or things that like get a bunch of users. For instance, I think Daniela, you're talking about delegation tools is getting a bunch of users. It was something that we kind of like, yeah, let's hack this together. We ship it. And then all of a sudden we're watching the RPC and it's like, you know, second or third out of all the apps we've ever built, right? And it's just like a quick little tool that we're building. So I really want to incentivize that. I want to incentivize people taking something from 80% to 100%. And that's usually the hardest piece. So that's what the feast is all about. So our first and feast like like with like a chicken chicken leg right like a chicken leg emoji like we're like we're like we're in medieval times and we're in the the great hall eating some chicken I don't think I don't know if that's actually going to be our vibe but we're, we're enjoying we're enjoying the fact that we've shipped something kind of like a Thanksgiving kind of thing even Thanksgiving has a terrible kind of vibe we need to find we need to find a good vibe of we're celebrating shipping things that doesn't have to do with like any other kind of thing. Okay, here we go. I'm going to share my screen and I want to show off Speedrun Ethereum. Here we go. So this is the new redesign of Speedrun Ethereum. And this is probably the, this is the first thing that I want to have like a feast for because it was something that, I mean, it existed. The old Speedrun Ethereum was fine. It was something that I mocked up, but it was ugly, right? It was a classic scaffold ETH build. Now we have this really like beautiful, cool, fun uh, design over the top of that and getting that design created, getting that design shipped, that that took uh, Carlos and Andrea and Shiv and probably some other folks like really, really working hard and kind of going the extra effort. So that's what I have this, this feast multi-sig for, and I'm using it to kind of just YOLO out to folks. I YOLO'd to Carlos and Andrea and Shiv already, and I will be doing that more often as we ship cool products. So just know that there's kind of like this, I don't know, it's even kind of like retroactive funding. There's almost like this retroactive YOLO that comes along with really delivering a product to a client or shipping something or going the extra mile. Uh, to add to that, I think that uh, Daniela, let's let's just look at this a little bit more. Uh, is there anything I need to? I, I think we even like this may be the new design for Build Guild too, right? We may be moving maybe slightly away from this awesome kind of like castle-y kind of thing and moving toward more of like a little pixelated. It's still a castle, but you know it's unicorns and happy, and there's no crusades or anything like that. We we need to find a good vibe, and and I think that you've you've discovered it here as you were kind of building this out. So I'm excited about that. So the next thing is uh, the staking app that Daniele has, and I think probably the best way to do this is Daniele, you show off your staking app. I'm going to be quietly yoloing a little bit of feast money uh, throughout the the not probably not throughout the day, but throughout the rest of the year or whatever. Just know that the feast is around and it's going to be something that's just like a big thank you from the Build Guild for getting something over the finish line. But let me pass it off to Daniele now. I think you have a bunch of builds, but let's start off with that staking app because that's the thing that I want to reward you for. For Basically, I want to have a feast for this thing too. You guys got it over the, the finish line and let's take a look at that and then let's uh, kind of see what other builds you have. Go ahead and take it away, Daniele. Okay. Um, can you guys hear me? Just audio check. Perfect. So um, I guess I'm going to do some sort of speedrun demo because a lot of the, or speedrun speed show off, because a lot of the apps that I have, I cannot uh, demo them for one reason or another, but I'll walk through, um, I'll walk through what they are. 
So this is the UI for the staking app that if Denver is going to be using uh, essentially for prioritizing which applications they are going to review. Um, Can I pin your video? How do I stick? So you're, you're basically, your screen is shared for your video, but not for the whole group. I wonder. Oh, because if, I'm not screen sharing. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder, to... I mean, this is really fancy and I have your video pin. Oh, and the effects where you like s transition from one to the other. <laughs> It's okay. Just OBS. Maybe try. Maybe try just show, showing your screen and say, "Oh, that's just OBS." I have that too. I can... Yeah, it's just OBS. I just created a couple. There we go. We I think got now, now I'm screen sharing. Yep. We got normally. You. Yep. Okay. And it works. Right? You so you keep going. going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yes, this is the the UI for the staking application. Um, credits to Chijoki, by the way, because he did he make it look good. I just had the the basic you know scaffold is. Uh, Look, it works. We'll make sure he's but... part of the YOLO too. He'll be part of the feast also. His name will be there. He should, yes. He definitely should. Um, the way this works, it's really simple. There's a, a couple of um, UI components. One allows you to stake your Spark and it gives you back staked Spark. Um, and this one allows you to unstake, but you can only unstake after a certain date. And this is after uh, if Denver has actually taken place. Um, the use case for this app is uh, the folks at Denver, they're going to use um, these essentially to prioritize the applications to review during the, the review process. Um, it's a really simple build. Uh, I guess the interesting, uh, the more interesting bit is in the Spark staker contract. It just works with two ERC20 tokens, um, and it has these two methods, stake and unstake. Essentially, it just transfers whichever amount of uh, Spark you want from, is it, I don't know if it's too small or you guys can read it. it I think I got it. Yeah, you have to really, right. you have to squint your eyes, but I can see what it's there. It's checking the time and it's checking the amount, right? I was just looking at your require statements, doing a quick audit here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's good. It's always good to make an audit after uh, the thing has gone live. Um, but... <laughs> Um, it's really easy. Yes, it, it transfers the amount of Spark that you want to itself, and then it means some Spark staking, uh, sorry, stick it Spark uh, to you, and then just emits an event just in case we want to do something with a subgraph or just look at events and I don't know, have some some data. The unstake is also really simple. The only thing that it does additionally is checking that the current timestamp is after the staking period. Otherwise, it just throws. Or reverts, and then it it essentially does the opposite. It burns your staked spark, and then it transfers the same amount um, back into your address, and and then it emits an event. And this is it. This is essentially uh, this build. Super simple, but Maybe very powerful, right? Super simple, uh, nicely looking. Not because of me, and uh, <laughs> it's it's apparently being used uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, Awesome. And so this is this was the first build. Um, these other two builds are a little bit older. This one, I need to switch network. This one is just, uh, I wanted to play with the bridge contract that the Optimus uh, folks created that lets you transfer, you know, Ethereum or assets like ERC20s from mainnet um, to Optimism. Essentially, what this is, is an ERC721 that, when minted, takes the ETH that it receives and forwards it to the, uh, the Optimus bridge with a parameter that tells the bridge who to send uh, the Ethereum to. And so if I find the mint function, there is. Um, this is the line that essentially does everything. So it invokes the deposit ETH2 with the value, which is the value you're sending to it. And then it forward, it uses, it has to send some parameters that are specific to the bridge, uh, like this one, L2 gas. But other than that, it's another very simple, uh, very simple build. I'm not going to demo this one for two reasons. One is I don't have enough ETH. It's like 0 0.25, but at this moment I am poor uh, in my wallets. Um, we need to have a feast yeah, so you have enough to be able to buy these. <laughs> I don't, yeah, you need 0 0.25. It it really is free because you're just going to get everything. Um, 
into your wallet, but in optimism. Um, and the other reason is it takes a little bit of time for the bridge to actually do its thing and, and bridge the bridge the amount. But I think you, Austin, also have one of these. I think you tried I, it a few yeah. months ago. You have one of these. Um, I'm, NFTs. I'm still in the screen share. Just for a second. I've got it. I've got it. I'm stealing it. Yeah, I'm it. Here we go. <laughs> uh, here we go. And mint. Oh, you're minting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, minting. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Here we go. Let's see if it goes. So the ETH is going to go into the main net contract and then you're calling the bridge. So that ETH yes. is then going through L2 and where does it land? What happens to it on the other side? Is it? Is it lands it in your wallet. Oh, wow. Okay. So basically this is like a, this is like a little uh, bonus NFT you get for bridging. You you make bridging really easy and you give someone an NFT for it, but the money's still mine. It just lands over in optimism. Yes, that's correct. Cool. I think cool. I probably could have done a better job with the, the copy because it says cost 0 0.25. Like if you don't read the FAQ, it looks like you're actually paying for the NFT. You're not. This is like transfer 0.25 to optimism and get a yeah, free NFT. Yeah, that's a lot better than it is. I was just how... YOLOing this 0.25. That was, I mean, that's a lot of it. That's a lot of ETH to YOLO. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you needed you need Chijoke to help you. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but you needed him to help you with this design too. Now, once you find a good uh, designer developer, keep him close. <laughs> yeah, I, I would need somebody to also draw some proper NFTs. This is just like my journey. AI. I asked it to yeah. generate a bunch of three looking things. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it went. So we we probably would need to follow it through the block explorer and see. Let's see. It's probably going to show that like. Yeah, it went to the optimistic gateway, right? So then I'm just yeah. like checking over on the other side. I'm checking my optimism balance, which if I go to like optimistic loogies, it's going to show my balance, right? This would this would increment after a while. Eventually increment. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah, there we go. So eventually I would see this number go up and I would have an NFT on mainnet that was just like a cool thing for, for bridging. Awesome. Yes. And somebody suggested doing the same thing, but minting the NFT on optimism instead, which is also a nice idea. I haven't played with that yet. Um, but yeah, this is, this is the build. And uh, the build. code... If you guys go on my profile in the Build Guild, I already submitted this, and there's the link to the GitHub repo um, if you want to see how it is actually done. Um, and this was the second build. It's like that line, but, like that one specific line where it's like, you can put this it, yeah. line into your smart contract and it's going to bridge ETH to optimism for you. Like that's super yeah, it's, handy. It's I want to totally I want to have that, hand, that line around so I can just paste it into other things. Okay, You third also build. need, I think, um, this what was the is actually task? an interface, so you need this interface. Okay. Which I think I copy pasted from their contract because they don't send things. The L2 gas. You're not sharing is... anymore either, by the way. I stole the screen. Oh, I'm away not. From you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. That's top two. Uh, what that was one? the L2 gas? How did you determine L2 gas in terms of minting on or transferring it to optimism? Um, from the documentation. Oh, you just hard coded to two hundred thousand. Hard coded 000. to two hundred thousand. Okay. Yeah. If they change that, it doesn't work anymore. But okay, <laughs> um, I don't remember if I. Oh no, actually, yes, I can change it. But it's from the documentation, um, and yeah, and then you need an interface. Uh, this interface, I have it here, but you can just copy it. And this cool. one, I don't remember. What it was. Is this on your build guild profile? Can I just yes. go zero x darn and already... go to builds and awesome. That's that's yes. a good lesson for everyone in the build guild. Post your builds to the build guild so we can find them, so we can <laughs> fork them. <laughs> okay, third build, Daniele. I think it's third build. Uh, staking. What is it? No, it's delegation, delegation tools. tools. Delegation um, tools. The background story for this one is a few months ago. I don't remember when it was, but the Optimism folks uh, they had the airdrop, the first airdrop for the token. And you could go through the steps for the airdrop and set a delegate to have this person essentially vote for you in the governance for the optimism um, L2. The problem is they didn't add a method to actually change the delegate after you receive the airdrop. And so people on the forum were asking, how do I do this? How do I? And so I, 
I started, I created this really quick build. This literally took, I think, less than half an hour from starting to deploying. It's really easy. Um, I can show the code, but there's um, essentially no, where is it? It's in example UI. I didn't even change the name of the page. Um, there's no solidity code. It's all in this method. It just makes a call to the delegate function on the solidity contract for the token and just passes a new delegate and that's it. Um, but I wanted to show this one because ironically, even though it's the easiest and fastest build I've created, it's also the project that outside of my working, like my proper nine to five work projects is receiving the most traffic. So in October, I added tracking with Plausible and uh, this thing has received almost 6,000 unique visitors in three months, October, November, in less than three months, two months and 10 days. This, um, is, this is kind of how we're tracking success also. We're putting plausibles on all of our different builds and it helps us prioritize like what's actually getting users. Like there's three people using multisig.lol and they're all me right now, but <laughs> this is awesome. It, it, I wonder if you could share your plausible with us so we could add delegation tools to the build guild uh, list of products. It's It'd be great for us to have like a great big list of all the different products that even have been made by other folks. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. We just think, go there. I think it is now public. Can see it. Paste that into the uh, chat. And we'll we'll add that. Where's the chat? I have too many monitors. But um, that's totally it. You build something useful, and all of a sudden, there's six thousand people using it, and that's that's a, like such a powerful and cool thing that like a user before would have had to go to Etherscan and connect their wallet, or maybe you know they'd use ABI Ninja probably. But if they're if they don't know about ABI Ninja or Etherscan. You, you they're kind of out of luck right and to, so having a nice yeah. and no one wants to go to etherscan and connect their wallet and make a transaction <laughs> like people want an app even if it's not super pretty they want an app to land on where they can just go click the button and, and do the thing yep and so today by the way it has already received 170 visitors in like eight hours coming from twitter too which is interesting they, yeah, it, this thing has been shared around a little bit on the governance yeah. forum on Twitter. Somebody is using uh, what Guild XYZ or yeah, some Guild other. XYZ is so, neat. Yeah. And then I've seen people uh, post it on YouTube, like YouTubers talk about it and link it in the description. There's sometimes I see stuff coming from YouTube. Um, yeah, um, I was trying to give it away to the, to the Optimus uh, Foundation in Bogota. But I didn't manage to, so we still own they it. They probably don't want. Probably they don't, they don't want it. Yeah, <laughs> they they like oh. having third parties in control of things because it decentralizes it a little bit more. I guess yeah, that's probably true. Um, the nice thing of this one is it's it would be really easy to other than make it look good, but to also make it multi-chain and multi-token because it's just it's the governor standard I think that the Optimus token follows. So any token that supports that. You know, you could just switch chain and use it for for something else. I don't know. GTC probably also works with these if you change it. So it could be expanded. And if anybody wants to contribute, feel free. It's on GitHub as well. I can give access to the repo. And if anybody wanted to fork it, it would take them, you know, a day, less than a day to go yeah. and put in whatever different thing. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. It builds you probably just need to change the address of the token. You can just change the address of the token and redeploy and it's going to work as long as it, it follows the same interface. So you don't even need to like change the name, I guess, and you're done. Awesome. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this set of apps, I guess, <laughs> have... <laughs> have been over the finish line and you were able to ship them, particularly the staking app looks beautiful. It does the job it needs to do. Uh, you were able to build it for the ETH Denver Spork DAO crew in a couple of weeks with, with help from Shizoke. Like awesome job getting this over the finish line. That's the thing that I really want to, to hammer here is like, you got this thing over the finish line and now it has users and you can be done with it, let people use it. But we're definitely celebrating that with a feast, and I'll I'll send you a big turkey leg, aka some <laughs> some ETH from feast.buildguild.eth, and also Chijoke too. So good job, Daniele. Keep shipping things. Keep shipping production you. products. Yeah, turkey bone. <laughs> <laughs> Great work. Okay, I think Shiv, you're up next. Thank what you do guys. you got for us, Shiv? Yeah. Uh, so sharing my hackathon project, which we did at ETH India. 
Uh, is my screen visible? Yep, we've got, yep. Yeah, so the idea was to build a crowdsource funding, basically a funding for diabetes researchers. Um, so the current situation is diabetes researchers are not getting paid enough for their research and the government are also not helping them in their research. So our idea was to bring this to people who have diabetes, they can also contribute to the researchers for the project. And for that, they would get an NFT certificate with some benefits. That was the basic idea. Uh, and so this is the contact. I mean, debug contact. Actually, I have deployed both the contacts on. Uh, so basically, there are two contacts. Uh, let me show you. The first one is diabetic funding, and the second one is the certificate contact. And here we are doing a cross chain call. So basically, uh, diabetic funding contact is deployed on Mumbai, and the certificate contact is deployed on Goreli. So when a person funds a proposal, uh, the NFT will be minted on Goreli. So that's the point. And if I walk through it, so this is the proposal address. So you can just come here and create a funding proposal. So let's suppose the funding target is for now, let's say, let's take it two way. So basically we are using a test token here. Uh, consider it as an USDC. So this is the test token which we'll be using for funding. So uh, just use two way here. And then I can mention the research paper CID. So in the front end, you will get an UI to upload an IPFS. So sadly, we didn't, we, was able, we wasn't able to complete the full front end for that. So here, uh, from the front end, you will be able to upload the whole research paper and all the metadata of it, and it will be uploaded to IPFS, and the CI, C, CID will be pasted here. So I'm just adding the CID here. Cool. Good scaffold ETH build. Yeah. It looks like a scaffold ETH build. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this, it's the hackathon stack. <laughs> yeah. Uh, since the, the, the connect which we are using underlying to make cross-chain calls, uh, they have not mocks created yet. So we was not able to test it locally. So we had to deploy the contact uh, and scaffold is gives this really nice interface. I noticed you had ABI Ninja up there too. But I also <laughs> noticed, yeah. what is this font? Go back to your Solidity real quick. You have like a script font for your Solidity. Who writes Solidity with, <laughs> look at this, look at this font. <laughs> Right? It's like, that's a halfway to Comic Sans. <laughs> I, to each their own. Everyone's got to have their own style. I think it's cool. Good build. Good build, Shiv. Yeah. That's, a, that's an awesome so, one. So I've created a proposal. And as you can see, the proposal count has went up. And now, uh, now, uh, so now if I want to see, so the, there was the second proposal created. So now if I want to see the details of it, I can just click here and read. So yeah, so that's why I opened the abi.ninja because it has a great UI. So if you see the result here of the proposal two, it's created. So this is the proposal two was created by this person. And its target funding is two currently, uh, two way and now I will show you the how the X calls are made, basically the cross chain minting stuff. So now uh, I'll be disconnecting from here. And I'll be connecting with the funder account. Disconnect it quickly. So this is the funder to account. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if I check, so the, uh, I've just opened up uh, the this NFT contract, which is on Goreli on the abi.ninja. And if you check the 
address of the funder to currently it should not have any balance uh, it should be zero so now once you fund the proposal so here you will be able to fund it so if i add the target so basically this is the target address of the nft contract add the target and then i need to add the proposal id to which the propose to which proposal i will be funding so this is uh, this all will be done in the ui and then the amount let's say i fund one way for now and now if i send it oh man it's only two way you could fund the whole proposal with one more way <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wanted to show the video thing also hopefully so now i made a call on mumbai funding the proposal id to with one way and once it gets through yeah so it's done so basically this contact will be making an exchange call exchange call to gorilla and will be minting a nft for the funder to address it takes some time but so there's a bridge between Matic and Gorley, and you make a call yeah. to the bridge, and it triggers a mint on Gorley. But it's all yeah, yeah. based on the Matic chain, and it trickles down to Gorley. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So basically, the Connect team uh, has done this. Basically, what you Got do it. is, so when you, uh, so we were calling this function pay. So what this does is it all updates the data success, and then it makes an X call. To the target so basically it is making a call to uh the nft content i think it would be a cool <laughs> build to bridge matic and gorley for people who are having a hard time getting gorley at the faucet like make a faucet yeah. where you can pay a little bit of matic and get gorley i so i've been looking for that bridge and i haven't found it but i guess connects is connected to all these different chains already you just have to use the connects kind of middle yeah way. Yeah, yeah, you just need to extend the contract and you call this uh, X call and add the domain ID. So basically this domain ID is the, they have uh, separate domain IDs. So this domain ID is for Gorilla. Cool. So it makes them call to Gorilla and hopefully on Gorilla it should be minted for this address. It takes some time. Yeah, so see, mm, the balance has worked. updated That's pretty quick. on Gorilla. Yeah. Uh, and so this was our uh, front end. Uh, this was not built with scaffolds in theory. So we used Bicorami here. So as you know, like diabetes people are of different age groups and they are not well versed with Web3. So to onboard them, we used Bicorami SDK so they can directly log in through Google. And once the login is done, Uh, yeah, and they can directly buy the, uh, let's suppose, USDC from here. Uh, so, by economy has this uh, on chain off, off chain RAM. Wow. So, you can directly buy through INR and get the token. So, this is for easy onboarding. Also, while creating a purpose, uh, all these transactions are batched. And also, these all are gasless transactions. You guys so needed a front end guy working with you on the hackathon. If you had the front end <laughs> guy, this would have been solid. None, none of the scaffold ETH stuff. Yeah, I mean, like uh, uh, I started it around six hours ago uh, before the hackathon was uh, before the hackathon was uh, going to end. So I was able to just complete the front end and integrate the bioeconomy stuff. Awesome, great work, yeah. good, good hackathon. And I think you were working with were you with Viraz on this one? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I awesome. was working with you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, congratulations. I think I think you got like some sponsor money, right? With this. Yeah, See? yeah, yeah. So, so, okay. so we won the Bioeconomy SDK pool price and the graph, subgraph. And uh, the other one was, I think I forgot it. <laughs> uh, Ballist. So we deployed it to Ballist. Okay. So that's yeah. very quick cool. price pool. <laughs> Congrats. Yeah, good work. What was that? What was that ramp? Dan was asking about the ramp. How did you bring that ramp in to be able to add funds? What's so, this called? Yeah, Transact. so this is by economy SDK. So they give this directly 
if you go to by economy documentation okay um, they have did really cool stuff so this is fiat on ramp off ramp stuff cool yeah, yeah. that's tricky because it's all about what country you're coming from and some work in some countries and some work in other countries awesome yeah. okay we better get going we got we, we yeah. don't have much time left how about Danny? Danny, you're up next. Great build, Shiv. Keep building cool stuff. I think, Shiv, you're doing a lot of contributions over on the Scaffold E2 side, which is really exciting, too. So keep building. Keep doing cool stuff. Keep hacking at hackathons. Keep winning that sponsor money. <laughs> All right, Danny, you're up. Take it away. All right. Uh, moment. Let me my screen. Okay. Here we go. Uh, can you see my screen? It's coming. There it is. Yep, got it. Action loogies. Oh, oh yeah, action loogies. So, yeah, this is uh, action loogies, and it was inspired by EIP fifty fifty, which is uh, the token in action standard. So, right here is like the github for the full thing if you're gonna check it out so i basically just uh abstracted the idea to like uh show what it can do and uh see what kind of uh feedback or reaction i might get from the community and if it's you know if it's positive we could actually look at um making uh the real existing loogies compatible so uh, this is what it looks like. Some of the these these loogies that look like these are actually dead. So you know, you could actually uh, take some actions like uh, slap or cast a spell. And if the strength, they have some stats. The loogies would have some stats like you know strength, uh, state, and vibes. So if the if you get slapped and you lose all of your strength, the loogie dies like this. But you know you can actually revive it. It's not like you're gonna be stuck with a dead loogie forever. <laughs> so uh, this is what it looks like. Here is where you can take the action, and you know to actually get started, you would need to first mint a loogie, which I've already done. I actually have some loogies and. Uh, you would, once you've mint the loogie, you need to like register the loogie to the state. And uh, you could just be easily do that by putting the token ID and register. Once you're done, you would also need to get a proof to take the action and you could do that by selecting the action you wanna get approved for. You click on that and you know, I've already approved this, so it says approved already, but if you weren't, the confirmation will pop up and you would get approved to take the action. And once that's done, you'd be all set to take action. And all you need to do is, you know, just put in the token ID for the action you want to send uh, for the loogie or the NFT you want to send the action to. And I'm just going to try some random token ID. Okay. Oh, you guys like your action. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of missed that. So, thanks. So, uh, gonna hit that. And I guess that happens when you can't, when the, the, uh, the NFT you're trying to send the action to has no strength. So, you can't actually send an action to an NFT with zero strength. And you can also send from an NFT with zero strength as well. So, uh i'm just gonna make sure this guy's all good or i could just come over here and look for a loogie that has some strength like uh, this guy 19 looks good sorry yeah. sorry danny this loogie is not uh, needs a, a smile <laughs> exactly you know yeah. I, yeah, I I actually I I actually use the loogies from like the old loogies repo without the mouth. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh that's something that needs to change. So the uh, the the thing is uh if the if it, if the community wants we can actually look to do the real thing for actual existing loogies which would of course have the smile. <laughs> But I do have a, 
I do have one picture of what it looks like with a smile. One second, just to pull that up. Well, well, the, the original Lugi doesn't yeah, have this a smile. Is, yeah, yeah, this is what. Can he you just see got this? slapped. He looks like he's unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> His yeah, vibes so, are not uh, chill. Not chill vibes. <laughs> yeah. So this is what I had for like the full thing. You know, the eye color will change, and you know, the whole thing just really looks this, not chill. This Lugi, this Lugi is high on drugs. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I, uh, that's uh, pretty much it. You can't, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, go. Great build. This. Action movies are awesome. So, so are the actions, uh, the actions themselves aren't like collectibles in any way. They're almost like effects that you apply to the NFT and you can add actions. Are, are these actions like slap? Are they part of the smart contract and it's just like an ID or? How is that generalized, I guess? Like, okay, like if we, so, yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, according to the specification, before you have the, the, the project launch, you would be able to specify the actions that the, the NFTs can take. So other projects that wants to like, uh, you know, support it can, you know, just support those actions. So you can actually query for, receivable actions, if I were to come to the smart contracts tab, you would uh, see the set of receivable actions that um, each NFT, each project can take like, a, you know, slap, noon, rage, plus <laughs> like that. So <laughs> I see that it's like a function selector too. The action struct yeah. has a bytes for selector. Is that telling you like what function you would call on the contract? That's cool. No, this, yeah, this, uh, this just actually, uh, just makes it clear that this want to do and, um, yeah. Neat stuff. That's a fun build. Damn, who's right? They so, need a smile on them though. I think these the the vibes not right with these loogies. They're they they're, they're yeah that guy. <laughs> this is a good build though. This is a fun one. Oh yeah. Thanks a lot, though. So. Yeah, great build. Keep building, Danny. Keep building awesome things. Uh, this is this is the kind of stuff we like to see on Friday. Is is some weird weird scaffold ETH builds and weird forks of things and fun fun loogie builds. I think Damu's up next. Uh, what what do you got for us, Damu? Oh yeah. Yeah, I I, I show you my screen. I yep, have another. It. I have another. SVC NFT project. Uh, I will make a just a quick uh, preview. Is this is a work in progress? Um, this is uh, emoticons that with a random eyes and random uh, mouth and a random color. Uh, we can mean uh, another one and. Uh, and this uh, NFT we will use for playing game that uh, I'm building now. Uh, and when you start, uh, when you play the game, the, the idea is to get uh, hair. And if your uh, emoticon didn't have hair, your emoticon will die. And anyone can uh, steal your emoticon. Um, and the emoticon have uh, some stats like uh, speed, strength, IQ, and uh, and and uh, we can put uh, emoticon too. Like we can get from this 42 and 43. Uh, are you seeing the debug page? We can put one new emoticon from the 43 and 44 and get a new one. We can get maybe three kids and see what they look. So we're just mixing them. Is that what's happening here? Yeah. 43 and 42 got mixed. So you'll see some of the genes come through from the two different ones kind of mixed yes. randomly. 
Yes, some from the parent, from, from the mother, and sometimes some mutation too. Oh, how are you doing randomness? Uh, it's the usual randomness. Uh, can you, I can share the code? Uh, let me see. Are you seeing my code? Yeah, we got the code. Uh, the wording is from the wording met metadata. Uh, it's just the, the block uh, this I kick up from a lot of uh, block, block like hash the, basically though. yeah, yeah. Block hash. cool yeah 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 uh, that's fine for this yeah yes and and the and the stats that uh, the each uh, each emoticon has these stats and the stats are uh, mixed from the parent too and if we see we get oh yeah they kind of look similar yeah. yeah. Yeah, but number forty-six yeah. looks just like his dad. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And and no one had the oh, nobody, no, nobody have the the eight and the mouth of the of the pine. Uh, let me create another one. Those were recessive genes instead of dominant genes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, give us a goofy mouth. Come on. Time, take time. Ah, didn't quite. I, I have, have the eyes. The eyes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Have, I have the eyes, and and these uh, are a uh, different color than the than the pine. This is like a mutation. Uh, well, cool. they, they, they are a lot of uh, different uh, eyes and, and mouth, so you get uh, different uh, shapes. Um, you and, said and this is for a game you're setting up. This is just the minting process of creating the characters, and then the game will be a more expanded thing beyond this. Yes, yes, yes. And this is how the, the dead one. And, and oh. now the dead, the, and now the dead one. Uh, anyone can steal one of the like the 24 uh, if I can share. Do you see my new screen? Yes. Yep. So the 21, if I go here uh, and I try to steal the 21, yeah, I'm the 21 is. So in your transfer function, you check if they're dead, and if they're dead, you don't care who the owner is, you just let people pass them around. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, what a weird yeah. mechanic. <laughs> yeah, cool. in the, I, I overcharged the transfer from, and in the health status, uh, I, I only check the, the owner if the uh, health status is uh, more than zero. That's such a funny line of solidity, but okay, yeah. let's go for and, it. And, and the and the hill is uh, going down um, uh, automatically because the hill uh, is based on a stand stop. So how do you charge the health up? Do you need to send them something to get them to heal up, or how does that work? Or does it just like is it just after time they just all die? Yes, but if you play a game that you get hell. Uh, you will ah, get to recharge this. The game, the game will give you health, and the mechanism is you have to keep playing the game to keep your your yes. emotive yes. alive. Cool. Maybe the, the maybe the hell uh, keeps uh, alive the the NFT. Maybe I don't know three days. So you yeah. play a game and you get an extra day. That will be like the mechanic. That. Cool. Is it okay? So make sure I'm pronouncing it right. Is it emotilon? How do you pronounce it? I don't know. Emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> uh, uh, emotion, and, and then there will be the emotico, emo, emoticon. Got it. <laughs> emo, I, I had, yeah, emoti, emoti coin and emoti lawn. Pretty cool. <laughs> well, great. I, I, I work, uh, I work in period. I will share more. <laughs> Who, okay, so who did the art? Did you get the art from somewhere or did you do it yourself? No, I, I get the art from one side that it was uh, with an open creative common uh, uh, free one and, and mix all the, the options. 
I we we have Olga on the call here, and definitely a shout out to her and how she's gonna change our prototypes. She's gonna change the whole game. Her yeah. and Andrea yeah. have been providing so many good designs, and I think that uh, we we have so many developers that can build cool things like this. But imagine a layer of design on top of this with with some intentional, like really good looking things. It, this looks great, by the way. This looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. Man. Next steps. We're about sure. to go pro. Sure, sure. Awesome, awesome build. Great work. I think uh, Carlos is up next. Do we have time? Maybe a quick Carlos run. I don't know if we're going to have time for Alex. We might have to save one for next week. Go, go Carlos. Let's go. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to keep it like super, super quick. It's okay. Really like, that's like a fun and quick build. But um, yeah, let me share. Uh, can you see my screen? Yep, we got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so. Um, at this point, maybe all of you know about like this uh, data field that is inside every Ethereum trans transaction. And you know, I, I took this winter's EBM uh, from a scratch course, so I've been like obsessing a little bit about like all this like low level stuff. But and anyway, uh, I, I was planning to do like a bigger introduction, but we are like short of time. So um, this is, for example, the the Uni token. This is the contract that was deployed, and this is the bytecode of the contract. So we are using that input data for that. And another example to use this um, data field is just to interact with a contract, right? For example, this is calling like the transfer function from, from the uni contract. And you can actually like parse it uh, here. Yes. So you can see uh, this, um, this transaction is calling the transfer. And it takes like the function signature or the function selector and then the two parameters. Um, actually, if you uh, copy this, this bytecode here and search it here, you will see that it is on the bytecode, right? And this is what I'm actually doing is, uh, is comparing the call data with this value. And if, it's like, if they match, this is like jumping somewhere in the code where the actual um, function is running. So in our usual um, scaffold is the contract component, we have this abstracted for us, right? We have this uh, UI where you can just like call like any function, but under the hood, this is using uh, ethers, which is also abstracting it for you because ethers knows the ABI. So it can calculate the, you know, like the, um, the, the signature and it's just like sending that to the contract. So what I did is I created like this new section here It's called like raw call data, where you can just like um, call uh, like same transaction with this raw call data. For example, I created like some utils here also. So for example, let's say we have this like number and the set number function. So let's say that we want to change the number. So to do that, you can uh, encode the, the function signature with this same set number, and then it's using uint 256. So um, this is going to be the function signature has it with this, I don't know how to pronounce this. So key case. It's like ketchup. Uh, it's like ketchup. So ketchup, it's ketchup. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, ketchup. I don't know how to pronounce anything. So I'm, I'm not going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I also have like, this is going to take the function signature and then we need the one argument, right? Which is like the number. So we can, I, I have like this util, which for example, let's say the less, like a, you know, like a random number here. And um, this is just like the number added to, 32 bytes. This is 64 character because it's in hexadecimal, right? So this is like 32 bytes. So we are taking the padded to the left one. I'm just going to paste it here. You can actually, this is like 32 bytes. So it's matched perfectly with the width of the text area. So if we can, if we send this, this is going to send the transaction and it's going to change the number here like directly. See? So one other thing that I did is like, if you remove this and call, for example, the set purpose, let's say, hola. If you send a transaction, it's going to paste here the call data that was like sent to the contract. So you can tinker with this. As, you, as, as we see, this is the function uh, signature, uh, yeah, signature. So for example, if we do like a set purpose, and then this is going to be a string, I think. Yeah, you see that is the same, right? And then this is a bit more complex because the string, like now, when you get to understand this like low level stuff, when you see, the contract when, when you use like a string you have to use like with memory right it doesn't allow you to do like just a string you have to do string memory and that's why because it's half like a dynamic uh, length 
right? So here, you see that there are like too much stuff here. Uh, hola, here is that you see is like the last you know the last chunk of the thirty two byte. But we have two more things here. Oh, two more things here. One is saying this is twenty. Twenty in hexadecimal is thirty two, which is saying like okay, we are taking a chunk of thirty two bytes, and then from that chunk we are taking four bytes. You see, this is it one, two, three, and four. So if I say, for example, here three, uh, say the transaction is going to say all, right? Because we, we didn't include, you know, like the, what the a last. great demo. So you can just like say, take four here and you can change. Maybe you can, this T, C can, can be like a D. So we can send and it's, it will be like something like OMA, right? Because we are like changing like the, 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 the call data. So just, I think this is just like super nice if you, Play with this and you understand how everything works it gives you like a, a, a most like the skill to understand now when, I, when i'm writing this i kind of understand why i need to do this uh, before it was like just the compiler telling me that i need to use like memory in this case so yeah uh, i will push this so you can just like use this and and, and maybe learn something about the code data um, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's it's it, it's something uh, in my mind. I always thought the twenty was saying it was a dynamic, and then the next number was telling you how long it was in terms of the word sizes. Like I thought the four would be four words worth of data, but it's actually the bytes, bytes within that. Yeah. yeah, and and it's right padded instead of left padded too. It's really interesting, yeah. and I I didn't know that until just now. So this is awesome. Like today, I learned too. This is really cool stuff. The fact that you built the width of the text thing to yes. show the exact word size is so nice. Maybe you could bring Shiv's font in there. Maybe give it a little swirly, swirly stuff. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Great build. This is an awesome build. This is a cool thing to just like teach you about call data and teach you about function signatures and how to like, you know, custom build that stuff. And I really love the tinkering, how you can like change one bit and see it in the front end. So great, great demo. Are you thinking about putting this in ABI Ninja? Maybe, I mean, I, I was thinking that maybe this could be like another like another tool because when yeah, you use, for example, like, like, like the send transaction from ethers, you have like a bunch of parameters, right? like the to, from, gas limit, data. So I was thinking that maybe you can like build a UI with that, with that. So you can like tinker with that on the UI and set, send like run raw transactions, whatever. I think that could be like a nice yeah. tool for some sort awesome. of build. Yeah. Yep. Okay, we're out of time. I'm sorry, Alex. Just just to give you guys a hint at what's coming, Alex is building a DND esque player sheet NFT with on chain dungeon crawler. So that sounds interesting. You'll have to come back next Friday to check it out, though. So uh, thank you all. Happy Bowtie Friday. Thank you guys for coming. Keep building, keep building prototypes. Also, the feast. I'm going to YOLO some funds to Daniele and Shajok right now. Uh, keep building things and get things over the finish line. All right. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Happy Bowtie Friday, everybody.